In the previous video, we took a deep dive into WebSockets, what they are, how they work. In this video, we're going to take a look at server sent events and long polling. There aren't going to be any deep dives here, primarily because long polling is just HTTP and server sent events is on akin to WebSockets. However, we're not taking a deep dive because the implementation would really be very similar to what we've done with WebSockets with just setting up a custom socket server and just finding out that it's a matter of returning specific headers to make the browser act a certain way. Same as with WebSockets, we have the upgrade and the WebSocket key headers to make the browser request a WebSocket connection and then return a specific header and the browser says, okay, yeah, uh, the server is ready to do WebSocket communication, let's do this. Same thing with the server event. And if you watched the previous video, when I'm gonna show you the header in this video, you're gonna understand, ah, okay, it's that thing and it makes the browser work a certain way. Nevertheless, let's dive in. All the links are in the description, the playlist, the source code, go check it out. For server sent events, let's jump into startup. First thing I wanna point out, we have a channel. This is just a queue to pass messages in, nothing more, nothing less. Moving down, we have the static files. This is just to serve the index HTML page when I'm gonna do the demo. And then we have an endpoint and one custom middleware. The endpoint is purely for parsing a message out of the query, putting it on the channel and returning. I'm also logging it here, but that's like, that's not even an operation, right? We're just putting it on the queue. And then later I want to read that from within here. I look at the channel, I take the reader, and then I read the message from here. This middleware, I'm essentially checking if the request falls on the path SSE, SSE for server sent events. I am taking the response and all I'm doing is I'm adding a header text slash event stream, and I'm gonna start writing some responses back. These two things aren't particularly important right now. I will explain them a little bit more why I'm sending event custom and the data custom event to data and what this backslash r backslash r is, and then I flush, right? So basically the thing that I'm doing here, I'm just flushing the data back and then I'm entering a while loop. So same as with the WebSocket connection, I establish a connection and it doesn't break. I will note here, we're not passing any cancellation tokens. So this is not a proper implementation. Do not put this on your production server. Uh, it doesn't work properly. This is an example, just so you understand how data travels. Nevertheless, in the while loop, we try to read stuff from the queue. Once the stuff is available in the queue, we just go ahead, write the data, and we flush the body again. So we write it, and then we send it. And that's pretty much all there is. Going to the www root index HTML, now we want to take a look at what the client side code looks like. Here we have event source interface. I'm not gonna go into greater detail as I did in the previous video about the WebSocket interface. This is just another interface. The browser still has to implement this object. Event source is the protocol and we will see what it looks like in a minute. But essentially what we have here is first we define the object on which route it should connect to. And then we say on message. So when we receive a regular message, we'll have that event. And from that event, I wanna pick the data. So alongside with the event, I'm gonna have other things in there, kind of like element events. So regular ev element events, I will tell you what element it is. I don't really care about all that. I just wanna see the data that I'm sending. In my case, it is going to be this data here. I have the on open event as well. So this is when the connection starts. As soon as it starts, I have a little trigger. If I wanna put some logic in here, I can. I have the on error, it doesn't really matter in this case too much. And then just as an example, I wanted to add this, just so you know that it's available. I have source, add event listener, and then I have a custom event where, again, I have the same event object as I have here, and I just pick the data from it, and I just log it. So what is this custom? This custom thing is the thing that I'm doing here. I'm essentially saying event, custom, so I'm defining that the next data that I'm about to send is a custom event, and it should go to this place rather than the regular on message received. It's a custom event rather than just a generic event, okay? So, I mean, minimal reproduction. Let's go ahead and run it and see it work. So .NET run, that's running. Let's open up the browser. Here we are on the 404. Let's open up the network tab. I have index HTML and there we go. So connection started, cu uh, custom, custom event uh, data. So the first custom, is this log here and then the data that i'm logging is custom event data so it's this message here 
The backslash R's are just the format to delimit your messages in this event source protocol. Okay, so this is just how you have to send data. If you remember to WebSockets, we have that whole decoding thing happening when we're receiving messages from the client and we would have to do the same thing if we were sending messages. This is just what you have to do with this. As this is a long running connection, so it is pretty much just sitting there. If we click on it, we have the event stream. And here we can uh, see the messages that we get from the server as they are being sent. We're, we just need to initialize them. And that's why I have the unbounded channel in there. Let's go ahead and duplicate this tab. What we're going to do is just send. And we're going to send something like hello world. Let me put a space in here, right? So I'll send that. There is that hello world message. So MSG. Hello world and coming back to the code for this page. So MSG. So this is just the to tag that this is a message event data. This is the data that we're receiving. And again, just the message format of the event stream. This is the protocol. Here's the message. This is what we read from the channel. We're logging it here and then we're sending it right. You can make it something else something like that. Send it and we'll not see it. And this is why I say it's not a production ready solution because you've seen there where I've, when I've du duplicated the tab and then closed the tab, the, the connection has closed on the client side, but on the server side, this is still open. So that other connection has read the message rather than this one. And the message essentially went nowhere because I'm not handling closing connections uh, efficiently. So if I refresh this a couple of times, some of these should actually reach this client as well. And there, there it is. Not too much to explain here. Again, we can go over the headers slightly as uh, the event source object is creating this first HTTP like looking connection in the request headers. What it's going to do is it's going to put this accept text event stream. And then when we respond, we also say, all right, you are about to get this text event stream that you asked for. And here it is. The connection is just running. And while it's running, you can send things down it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, uh, let's go ahead. I'll stop this. Uh, let's actually terminate the terminal because it's not going to close properly. We're going to go to the long polling solution. I'm just going to open the terminal here. And uh, again, not too much to explain here. I have the same setup. I have the channel. If you want, you can uncomment this code and make the messages be sent to this channel on a five second period or change the period. Otherwise, again, I have two endpoints. I have listen and I have send. Send is pretty much the same as in the previous example, not pretty much exactly the same. And then I have listen. Listen is going to act maybe a little bit unexpected. Basically, when we're going to make the HTTP request, if there is nothing on the server, the HTTP request is not going to return and say, uh -uh, I ain't got nothing. Try again in five seconds. That's not what it's going to do. What it's going to do is it's just going to sit there and wait. And then when it has something, that's when it returns. And then it's just going to make another request again straight away. So let's go ahead and uh, see what the JavaScript code looks like. We have the listen function, simple fetch for the listen endpoint right here. We wait to read from the queue. Once something is available, status code 200, write the data and we exit. Otherwise, if there is nothing to read from the queue, this will basically indicate that the queue is closed. Just give back 200. You have the listen. Once you get the listen, you can grab the text or the JSON or just, you know, pa pass it on to the end of the next promise that you're going to return from here. But we have a callback function here. And once we have the text, just pass it to the callback function and whatever the callback is, make it ha make that handle the, re the result. Otherwise, at the end, just go ahead and requeue the listen with the same callback. So what we're doing is we're basically registering a listen on this endpoint and the callback is a function to just console log these responses. And then I have a send function here, which will just be a convenient way for me to send messages, show you what happens in the network tab. Let's go ahead and run this. Come, come back to the browser. Let's refresh this. And there's the first listen connection. It is just sitting there. We can go to all. But yeah, this is just sitting there and it's waiting. So it's a long running connection. You can see the response or the initiator or where is it timing? Yeah, request not finished yet. So it's just, yeah, it's pending. So I have the console tab here. We can call the send function that I have here, right? So the send function, it's available to me. And the message that I put in here, that's what will be sent to this endpoint. And it just saves me from encoding the component here. But anyway, I can say something like hello world send. And what happens now 
is this listen request happened before we've sent something. So we were listening before we sent it. On the listen, we will see the response is hello world. So we've received what we've sent after we started listening. That may sound confusing, but here you will see that after we've finished listening, we've received the result, we started listening again. So this is the next thing that is pending. So it's not like we are triggering the thing on an interval. What we're doing is we're constantly listening. And once we have the result, we take it and then we instantly start listening again. The penalty price that we have to pay is that with every listen, we're sending a bunch of data and making the backend reparse things and re-understand, okay, this guy wants to listen again. And that's pretty much long polling. Again, we can uh, bring up the console and send something else. If you pay attention, we are listening. So we've made a request and we're just waiting for a response. We can send something again like, hello, here's the request that was listening. It received some data, again, because we have a function with the callback, we can do whatever work we want with it here. And this is where we initiate the call. This is this response. And then we instantly queue another listen. That's pretty much all I have on the long polling and server sent events. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, tell me in the comments. If you have any questions, tell me in the comments as well or ask them on the Discord server. If you were expecting a deeper dive, you probably didn't watch the previous video. So go ahead and watch that. Otherwise, thank you. And have a good day.